you guys just can't stop asking for 5 gigahertz the offers. So let's build one. Now, for everyone that is confused, Wi-Fi works on multiple frequencies. The most common ones are 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. 5 gigahertz is newer than 2.5 and faster. Pretty much all modern Wi-Fi devices nowadays use 5 gigahertz, but our hacking tools, they are all made for 2.4 gigahertz only. So naturally, you wonder, do the same vulnerabilities work on 5 gigahertz networks? The answer is yes but getting there is a bit more complicated. Espressif hasn't made a 5 GHz ESP chip yet, so I can't work with any of those. So we have to use a Raspberry Pi here in combination with a Alpha Wireless card. Let's have a look at the hardware we will be using for this project. The star of our setup will be this. This is a Raspberry Pi 3 model B+. You can pretty much use any Raspberry Pi for what I'm going to show you, but this is one I had lying around. I like to use the full-size Raspberry Pi rather than the Pi Zero because this gives us Ethernet and USB-A, which will be super helpful. We also have a full-size HDMI out, so I will be connecting this to a monitor, and I think this will just make the entire process a lot easier. But besides the Pi, we obviously need a Wi-Fi card for hacking. I'm going to use this orange Alpha Wireless card. This card is a bit older already, but it does support both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and it works plug and play. You don't need to install any drivers or anything like that, which is a huge plus. It also looks super sick with these large antennas. So beside our Pi and our Wi-Fi interface, we obviously also need a power source, a micro SD card that we will store the Raspberry Pi OS on. Now, additionally, I will be connecting this to a monitor with HDMI. Um, and connect a keyboard as well and use Ethernet because I don't want this to be connected to Wi-Fi at all um, just so that it doesn't matter what we do with the Wi-Fi interface uh, we have an internet connection. Now let's get started. First of all I'm going to take the micro SD card to flash the Raspberry Pi OS on the card. So to get the Raspberry Pi OS on the SD card I first Google Raspberry Pi OS and this is the website of the Raspberry Pi Foundation and it's super cool because they have a Raspberry Pi imager um, ready for you to go. You can get it for macOS, Windows and Ubuntu and it makes the whole setup process so much easier. I can really recommend using this. So download the imager and start it. Make sure your SD card is connected. First thing you have to do is select an operating system. I'm just going to go with the standard Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. Then I choose my SD card and click write. Yes, everything will be overwritten that's currently on the card. And now we just have to wait until the flash process is finished. Now, once this is done, continue and you can safely remove the SD card from your computer and plug it into your Raspberry Pi. Now that we have the Raspberry Pi OS ready to go, we can basically start the Raspberry Pi. And before I do that, I'm just going to connect Ethernet, connect my wireless keyboard, the HDMI cable for the display, and then of course the power supply to actually give the Raspberry Pi power. Okay, now if everything worked out well, we should see this. The welcome screen of the Raspberry Pi OS. Now, this is where we can set our country. Let's see. Now, it also wants us to change the password because keeping the default password is, of course, a security risk. Okay, once this is done, we are ready to go. I'm going to start a terminal. And since we are trying to build a deoffer here, I recommend we use mdk4. So let's start by installing that. sudo apt install mdk4. Okay, now that we have mdk4 installed, we need to plug in our Wi-Fi card and check if it shows up. For that, I'm going to type sudo airmon ng and we see that we have wlan0 here. 
uh, this Broadcom chip is the onboard Wi-Fi chip of this uh, Raspberry Pi. But we are not going to use that one. We are going to use WLAN 1. And that is the one I have plugged in. That's the Alpha Wireless card I showed you earlier. And um, you can see this is the driver and this is the chipset. So if you can't find this Alpha Wireless card that I'm using, maybe you can find another Wi-Fi card that uses the same chip or is compatible with the same driver. Um, because the problem is not every Wi-Fi interface or card will work. And that's because we need monitor mode and packet injection. Monitor mode means that we can see all the Wi-Fi frames that are floating around us, even those that are not addressed to us. And packet injection means being able to send our own custom raw Wi-Fi frames. So a lot of cards work and you can, can access the internet with them, but they don't allow you to see all packets or send custom packets. But we need both for doing Wi-Fi hacking. So that's why I'm using this card, because I know it works pretty much plug and play and it has both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So those are all the important things to keep in mind if you're looking for a wireless card. Okay, time out here. I made my life super easy here because I'm using an old Wi-Fi card that just works plug and play and happens to have 5 gigahertz. Now the problem here is that this card is not available anymore. Uh, good luck finding it and good luck finding another card with the same chip. So I feel like cheating here because you guys are obviously not being able to reproduce the build I have set up here. So I want to show you two other ways of getting this working. So the first one is with the Raspberry Pi. There is a project called Nexmon and I will link to it in the video description. And this is a patch for a variety of Wi-Fi chips. And it includes pretty much all of the Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi chips. And if you install this patch, then you can run monitor mode and packet injection on the Raspberry Pi itself. So you won't even need a external Wi-Fi adapter. And I will also link to a very good article that goes through the installation process on the Raspberry Pi step by step because the readme is a bit cluttered, to be honest. Now the other alternative is, and that's what I have set up here now, a newer alpha card. I'm happy to recommend this one because not only are you able to buy it, it is much faster, supports USB 3.0 and is also smaller. But unfortunately it doesn't work plug and play, but it only takes a few commands to get it working. The first thing you have to do is type sudo apt install dkms. Now I already have this installed, I already went through the process because I just wanted to make sure this actually works. And then in the next step you have to clone the repository. So this is something you probably want to copy paste. Now if you downloaded this repository, cd into it. And if you're inside the downloaded folder, type sudo make dkms underscore install. This is going to take a few minutes, so lean back and I don't know, get yourself a coffee. But when it's done, and again, I already have this installed, so that's why it's giving me an error here. Um, I can return to Airmon NG, and I will now see WLAN 1. Now, the good thing about this is you can actually find other cards with the same RTL 8812AU chip out there. Uh, some of them are cheaper. And that's just fantastic. So uh, this is definitely something you can recreate now. But there's one more caveat to this. And that is if we type sudo airmon ng start wlan1, it will give us an error. So airmon ng is not able to put this into monitor mode, but we can put it into monitor mode manually. So for this, I'm going to type sudo if config wlan1 down. Then I'm going to type sudo iwconfigwlan1 mode monitor. Then you type sudo if config wlan1 up again. And that should be it. Now we should be able to, for example, start arrow dump ng wlan1. Now keep in mind, this is now wlan1 and not wlan1 mon. And now you can see it is perfectly able to capture a lot of uh, access points as well as stations. 
And starting MDK4, the of my own network, is also working pretty well, as you can see here. So um, this is also capable of packet injection. And I'm just going to stop this because there's no point. But um, yeah, as you can see, this is working perfectly fine. And I just wanted to show you that. Now let's continue with the rest of the video. But if you have one that's working, then we can get started by um, sudo airmon ng start wlan1. This will turn this into monitor mode so that we can actually see all the packets around us. Okay, now that our Wi-Fi interface is set up and ready to use, we can run sudo arrow dump ng and then we have to declare the interface which is wlan1mon, so the monitor mode. And what this will do is basically scan for both access points and stations in my area. Now, there are so many, I have to filter. Luckily, I know that the network I'm attacking runs on 5 GHz only. So I'm going to run the same command, but with dash dash band A at the end. And this will give me only the output of 5 GHz networks. And as soon as I see the network I'm looking for, I'm pressing Ctrl C to stop this. And here is the network I'm looking for. And as you can see, it runs on channel 44. So what I'm going to do is you run the same command, but declare dash dash channel 44 at the end. And I'm running this again. And now I only see networks and devices running on that channel. And it looks like we already found one station that's connected to our testing network. This step is actually very important because with the last command, we not only make sure that we can see the devices we are uh, about to attack, but that our Wi-Fi card is set to the right channel. So by running this command with dash dash channel 44, we set this Wi-Fi uh, adapter onto channel 44. And if we don't, then we might have problems running the attack later on because the card is running on the wrong channel. Now the next thing I'm going to do is use MDK4. Now you can do the same thing with Airplay NG. However, I found that on certain Wi-Fi channels it doesn't work. Uh, for example, I saw that on channel 36 it works, but this network is on channel 44 and it just wouldn't de-off. I'm not sure if that's down to the Wi-Fi driver, the card I'm using, or Aircrack NG, or some combination of those. But all I can say is that MDK4 works. And since we are trying to build a de-offer here, I think MDK4 is also the, the better fit. It supports more than just de-offer attacks, but it's pretty good at it. So let's run MDK4 by typing sudo MDK4. Uh, then I have to, again, declare the Wi-Fi interface, which is WLAN1MON. And then I have to declare the attack mode, which is D for de-off. And now I am also declaring dash capital E space hoon 5 gigahertz because this is the network we are attacking. Now I'm going to make this a lot bigger and putting my test iPad here on the left side so you can see what's going on. And now let's see what happens if I press enter. Oh, there we go. There we go. We're disconnected. It, it took a second, but it works. Ah, we see the network on the iPad again. Let's try to connect. Yeah, it's having a hard time. Oh, now it's telling us that it's the wrong password. Now, of course, it is the correct password, but we are just getting de-offed again and again. And so the iPad thinks we just entered the wrong password. And that's why we are not able to connect. Let's stop the attack and see if we can reconnect the iPad. Now it works. So there you have it, guys. This is how you de-off on 5 gigahertz. Now, obviously, you don't have to use a Raspberry Pi. You can just use Linux on your main computer, maybe in a virtual machine or on a separate computer. Maybe you want to use Kali Linux because it makes things easier because tools come pre-installed. You have so many ways to, to customize the setup. I'm not saying this is the exact setup you have to rebuild, but uh, this is what I chose to showcase here. Now, if you think, isn't that a bit expensive and big and complicated to set up? Yes, and that's why we make tools like this. This is the D of Andromeda. It works plug and play with pretty much all operating systems. We have the Hunitor, a serial command line tool that makes it easy to access this. 
and we have a few tutorials already up on the channel and a lot more to come in the future. Uh, we are also working on a new tool to make interfacing with this a lot easier. So if you're interested in all of this, be sure to subscribe. Also, if you haven't, check out our video Diofa vs. Jammer, where I explain to you why Diofing is not the same as radio jamming. But yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you like my Raspberry Pi build here and have a nice day.